Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, JT Open Stuff. And today, guys, we're going to open up the last three of my thrift store find figures. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was at a local thrift store, picked up six figures that I could not believe were still sitting on the shelves. It was half price blue dot day. So I picked up all these for $2 each. They were marked four. We've got this shadow figure. The Adventures of Batman and Robin figure. And a Batman Forever figure. So we're going to open these up today, see what we think about them. You guys leave me a comment down below of which one's your favorite. And have you found any toys sealed in package like this at any of the thrift stores in your area recently? It's almost next to impossible. So I'm really curious to see if any of you have found anything like this in your area. So with that being said, let's get started. Now I'm gonna open them up in the order that I'm probably most excited to open them. So we're going to put Two-Face as last. Then we're gonna put Ra's al Ghul next. And then we're gonna open up this. So this is Shiwan Khan with rapid strike chopping action. Now, I was never a big shadow fan. Don't really know a lot about the shadow, but I will say this, I thought this figure was really kind of cool looking. Super, super long hair. It's got some cool accessories. I like the way it's displayed in its blister pack. And you can see it did have a thing going at the time of, of, of its original sale. Free Shadow Agent hologram ring when you buy two shadow toys. That hologram ring probably would have been pretty cool. Now, even though I was not a huge fan of the shadow, that is a really cool shadow figure right there. That would have been a really neat figure to add to the collection. As would this Shadow Mirage SX100. Look at how cool that car is. Very, very neat. Reminiscent of maybe a Batmobile type car, but very cool. I like it a lot. Same with this Thunder Cab. Check that out. Very neat stylization. So maybe I'll have to keep my eyes out. And if I ever see one of those, I'll pick it up. I'll open it on the channel for you. So without further ado, let's get into this opening. Let's open up this Shiwan Khan figure. And guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is JT. This is JT Open Stuff. I open everything from vintage to modern, everything in between, blind boxes, thrift store finds, Motu figures. I like everything that I can find. I'm going to open right here on the channel for you guys. So thanks for watching today. I really do appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed already, please, please do subscribe. And if you have subscribed, thank you so very much. And either way, thank you for watching today's video. So one of the things I can tell you I already like about this figure compared to some modern figures is it feels like it has some bulk to it. If you've watched some of my videos in the past, you'll know that there were a couple of G.I. Joe classified series figures that I opened up that I could not stand how flimsy some of the weapons were with that. And the figures themselves, unless you're getting a classified series figure or something along those lines, the figures nowadays are just so thin and small, whereas this, it's a nice, bulky figure. And look at some of these accessories. Now, this is going to be interesting. Looks like there's a little channel in the back of his helmet to actually fit his ponytail, so that's kind of... Kind of neat. We'll put that in there. Look at that. We could pull that ponytail right up through that channel. Very cool. Very nice. Let's see if we can get the light over just a little bit more. Get that in there for you guys. What do you guys think of that? Now, we also look like we have a little waist, a little belt. I 
I think I have that on correctly. Let's take a look at the picture that I can. Absolutely, that is correct. So don't fall forward. I mean, geez, the spikes on that thing. This poor guy out of the battle before it ever gets started. All right, now in this hand, looks like we've got a, got room for this weapon. And then in this hand, we'll get this staff. This kind of, for some reason, makes me think of a Serpentor staff from back in my G.I. Joe days. Very neat. I love Serpentor, the idea of Serpentor. When they added him into the G.I. Joe lore. What did you guys think? Did you, did you like that or did you like Cobra Commander? being the leader of Cobra. I kind of thought it was cool that they brought in a little conflict between the two. But there we go. So it says that it has chopping action. So on here you can see it says, place the Puraba in figure's right hand as shown. Position arm up, then squeeze the knees together for rapid chopping action. Slide perba handle up to reveal glowing mouth. Move lever at back of staff to open and close the serpent's mouth. So that's very interesting. So this little thing, we'll look at that after I ch check this chopping action, but here we are. We'll put his hand up, we'll squeeze his knees. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Chopped so much, he threw the perba. So let's take a look at this. Apparently this guy slides back and forth, as you can see on there. But I... Cannot get it to, oh, there we go. Wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> so we would have it like this and then we, so that would be the way that it would be in a normal setting. And then I guess when you want to release the glow, you then kind of push that down and open up the glowing mouth. So it's a pretty neat little feature. And then, as you can see, nice chopping action. So, put his arm, see if we can get his arm. Might have to go all the way back around again. There we go. We'll put that back in his hand as such. And I do like that these figures, now this hand almost looks like it's got a trigger. So this does not fit in there perfectly, but I will say that I do appreciate the fact, there we go. I do appreciate the fact that the fingers are not super bendy, the weapons are not super bendy, so you can put them in and out of the figure's hands Pretty simply. And then on the back, we have the little lever here that will open and close the serpent's mouth. So all in all, pretty cool little figure. I do not like this little part right here. So personally, if I were gonna display this figure, I would probably display it without the head garb and the chest piece, and I would display it just like this. I think he has a really cool look without those two things on. But very cool figure. Absolutely awesome pickup for $2. But we'll stand him up right over there. Guys, I've got an idea in, in the works as I'm standing this guy up. When I started this channel, I just kind of did it as a, just a fun thing. Didn't know if anybody would even watch any of my videos and... 
as of this recording, I've got almost 350 subscribers. I've been super excited about it, but there's been something I've been wanting to do for a while. And that is, I'm thinking of building a thing on my opening table to make it a little more professional now that I've been doing some more videos and maybe some display space for some figures and things in the background. I'm gonna be working on the plans for that in the near future. So if you tune into a video at some point and you see a totally new background, that's what I'm up to. So thank you so much for watching. You've inspired me to do this and I appreciate it. Now let's move on to this Ra's al Ghul. I love the character of Ra's al Ghul in Batman. I think that a lot of times he is very underrated as a Batman foe. So I love any time that there is a cool Ra's al Ghul figure. And as you can see, pop that right open. Let's take a look at some of the other figures. There's the Paraglide Batman, the Rocket Pack, the Radar Scope, the Bola Trap, the Tornado Batman, Glider Robin, the Bane, which we opened up on our last thrift store figure opening, Cyber Gear Batman, Lightning Strike Batman, and Mechwing Batman. Now down here, search out villains on land, sea, and air with the Batman Crime Squad. And as you can see, there's a whole other set of figures and vehicles you can collect down there as well. So very, very cool. As you can see there, 1995. So very neat. Let's put that over there where that kind of stuff goes. And let's take a look at this Ra's al Ghul. Very, very serious looking as he should be. He's probably like, what, three and a half billion years old? <laughs> Just kidding. But he's old, he's serious, he knows what he wants, and he'll go out and he'll take it. So Ra's al Ghul comes with several things as well. He comes with this helmet. So let's try that out first. There's his helmet. Ah, actually, geez, JT, you're putting that on backwards there, buddy. Now, that is actually kind of neat. When I first put it on backwards, I was thinking, what in the heck? That thing is terrible. And we also have what looks to be like a little rocket launcher type deal. This goes in here. This is one of my favorite things from the 80s and 90s that doesn't happen all that much anymore because of different restrictions and choking hazards and things like that. But how many times I had GI Joe figures and such that had firing mechanisms. So there we go. Pretty, pretty cool. So that we are going to put in his, we're gonna say he shoots this with his left arm. And we'll put his sword in his right hand. So again, cool little figure. I really like it, but same as the last figure, the headdress is neat, but I think I prefer just seeing him as himself. Now, I could see leaving it on his head like that so that in a situation for a battle, he just pops it down and he's ready to go. But for display purposes for me, I would leave it just like this. Very cool little rocket launcher, cool sword. Now let's look at how much flex is in this sword. You're gonna have some, but it's not terrible. And again, just a nice, sturdy figure. And let's see, will he stand up with all of this gear on? That is a good question. You have to lean his torso way back to get him to stand up, but he will stand up. So I will give that a passing grade as well. So what do you guys think of this Ra's al Ghul? I think it's pretty cool. If it were me personally displaying it in my collection, I think I would go sword, no helmet. I think, just think he looks classic. He looks cool like this. And this would be the way I would display it. 
but for right now, let's put him over here as well. Get him to stand up there again. And let's get into this Two-Face. Now, I think Two-Face is a really cool character, but I like Two-Face kind of a, for a more personal reason, and that is that my son is a huge fan of Two-Face. In fact, when he was younger, probably, I had to guess, I think he was around eight to 10 years old. That when Legoland first opened, we went around Halloween and they knew they were gonna have a costume party. And my son dressed up as Two-Face and actually won a huge prize pack from Legoland dressing up like Two-Face. So it's always kind of held a little bit of a special place in my heart and just like it because he liked it. So if you're a parent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're a kid, you'll know one day, hopefully. All right, so let's look at this. So that is interesting. His gun is molded into his hand. And in some cases, I might not like that, but in this case, I actually really like that. That is a really cool feature that maybe more figures could, could think of. His face is definitely all scarred and mangled. And on this side, hello, Mr. Jones. And if you don't know that, that is Tommy Lee Jones who played Two-Face in the movies, the early movies, let's say. Yo. Now, I don't know about this outfit, but it's definitely out there. But hey, that's part of Two-Face's character, part of what makes him so great. All right, so let's sit him right over here for the time being. Now these figures that came with this Batman Forever series just had some insane accessories that came with them. And we're gonna take a look at them and see what we think about them. But I can already tell you, without even questioning it, if I were gonna display this in my collection, I would display him just like this with maybe his coin leaned up nearby. But we're gonna go ahead and get these accessories on him. And now as you can see here, this does have a little stand right here. So the stand is on the bottom. You fold that out, spread the legs apart just a little bit. And as you can see, we have a little rocket. Now Two-Face could stand right next to that rocket and it looks kind of like an old gun, to be honest. Let's see if we can get this Two-Face to stand. His feet are different sizes, kind of different heights. So I'm gonna sit this camera back down just for a second. I'm gonna work on this and see if I can get him to stand up. All right, so there we are. Now, let's take this and we are going to load these little missiles into into the little gun here. Sorry if I had that out of view. So there you can see, you pull back on this. It doesn't really click in, you just pull back on this and it shoots out. Doesn't, well, yes it does, it does spin. So you can spin to the next shot, pull back, and then spin it again to where this kind of evens up here. Pull back, 
So very, very neat. Simple but effective. And sometimes all you need is simple and effective. It doesn't need to be overthought. It doesn't need to be too difficult to use. Something like this is simple and effective. So toy makers, learn from your past, simple and effective. But overall guys, what do you think about this Two-Face? Would you display it with his cannon gun or would you display it as is? I'm gonna choose as is. I think it's a neat figure on its own. I do like the gun molded into his hand. Won't come out of his hand, can't lose it. It's nice and solid. I just really like it. And it's still even got a little bit of wiggle to it, which is interesting considering it's molded, but overall a really great figure. So guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Tell me which one of these you like the most in the comments down below. And if you've subscribed already again, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. If you haven't, please do click that subscribe button, click the notification bell so you can see all my upcoming videos. And with that, I'll say thank you so much, and I'll see you on the next opening. This is JT. Bye.